I want to welcome everybody to our deep sleep class. This is one of my favorite classes because what we're going to be doing is teaching you how can you get more sleep in less time. How can you wake up naturally without the alarm clock and feel rested where you don't need a cup of coffee to get your day started. So today we've got a lot of information for you, but unfortunately, 30% of us have some sort of sleeping disorder that's medically diagnosed. 70% of us at some time during the day will feel tired and will look for a, some kind of caffeinated beverage to pump them up. 70% of people are dependent on caffeine to keep them going during the day. So that means they are what we call sleep deprived. And if you're in that category where you have to have some caffeine, then you're obviously not getting enough sleep. If you wake up with the alarm clock, you're obviously not getting enough sleep. So we're going to teach you today how we can do that and get better, deeper sleep and less of it. So remember insomnia and what's sad about insomnia is that 30% of the people actually have insomnia out there. And you know what most people do for insomnia? They take medications and the medications does not let you get to deep sleep. You fall asleep, but you never get to deep REM sleep. So you actually don't feel any better after taking medications. And it's really training the, the body to do the wrong thing because we want our body to be back on a natural cycle. Other people try to take natural stuff to help them go to sleep, like melatonin. Melatonin actually uh, reduces your body's ability to make its own melatonin. So in the long run, it's really bad for you. So we have to get to the source of the deep sleep problem and or the insomnia problem, and we have to make sure that we're moving your body in the direction of correction. So think about this. Most people characterize the inability to sleep or stay asleep, that would be what we call insomnia, okay? Now, insomnia can be brought on by a lot of different things, but hormonal changes, side effects of medications, um, diet changes, work schedules, shift changes, time zone changes, uh, stress, uh, depression, anxiety, all these things can add up and create what we call some short-term insomnia. That's normal part of life, okay? We're talking about the long term. What is the long term effects of not sleeping well? And there's other things that can cause sleep problems as well. And sleep apnea. Um, and we know sleep apnea is, uh, is when your body doesn't function properly. It wakes itself up. And that's a neurological problem. We, we've helped hundreds of people with sleep apnea just by getting their necks back in alignment. But they want to put you on a CPAC machine and all this other stuff. And that's okay if we can't fix it. But the upper cervical neck directly controls the area where we sleep. And we've helped a lot of people with sleep apnea. Hyperinsomnia, we talked about that. People not getting enough sleep. They're, trying, they're sleeping during the day because they didn't get enough sleep at night. They, they turn to caffeine. Parasomnia is arousal. They, these guys have nightmares. They, they never get into and they, what they call deep REM sleep. Uh, and so they end up with walking REM sleep. So they can actually uh, sleepwalk. And then you have uh, uh, REM sleep disorders where you have lack of REM, deep REM sleep, and that allows the person to act out the dreams. Uh, kind of scary, but it does happen. Periodic limb movement is characterized by rhythmic movements of the limb, so they have a lot of movement in their sleep. And then shift work sleep disorders, you, you can't help your shift changes that throws off your body's rhythm. And then narcolepsy is a neurological disorder that affects the the control of sleep and, and wakefulness. And we've helped a lot of people with, uh, with narcolepsy with just the chiropractic alone. Um, now, the big thing about sleep is understanding GABA. Uh, gamma amniobutyric acid, call it GABA for short, is the most inhibitory uh, chemical that your brain releases to put the brakes on so you slow down everything, your metabolism, your thinking, it prepares your body for sleep. Majority of us uh, have problems, if, if we have problems sleeping, then we have problems with GABA most definitely. And GABA uh, is one of the major roles, it helps your, your body balance uh, an excess excitation, so it calms you down. And low levels of GABA will decrease, and that can be associated with anxiety and depression. So GABA plays uh, the, probably the most important role in the synthesis of the sleep hormone, melatonin. And so you don't want to take melatonin because you make the problem worse. What you want to do is get to the source of the problem, and GABA would be the main problem. So the GABA 
hormone is made in the brain. So when you don't have a proper neurological function in your brain, because there's pressure on the spinal cord due to you've lost your curvature in your neck or you've got an atlas subluxation, your body's not gonna produce GABA. I can't tell you how many people we've helped get better sleep just with chiropractic alone. Some people's sleep issues with GABA comes because they don't have the proper curve in the neck, and that can take sometimes years to fix. If you have a rotational problem in your neck, then that's an easy fix, and some people feel better after a week of care. So depends on what type of neurological disorder you have. But remember, your nervous system controls the production of GABA. If your nervous system is not producing GABA, then it's going to cause bigger problems. Symptoms of low GABA levels means you have trouble uh, relaxing or loosening up, or you have racing thoughts that keep you awake at night. Your sensitivity to bright lights and noises, and you have anxiety and panic attacks. You have heart palpitations, cold hands and feet, irritable bowel syndrome. These are just signs that your GABA is probably low. We want to get that checked, okay? Now, factors involved in reducing GABA levels, number one is subluxation. And um, when we talk about subluxation, this top joint in the neck can be out of alignment, subluxated. It's called atlas. It directly affects the brainstem, which directly affects your GABA production, okay? That's easy fix, though. The hard fix is when you've lost the curvature. You're supposed to have a 63 curve here, with a zero millimeter forward head posture. My average patient is 47 years old with a 10 millimeter forward head posture, okay? And correcting that 10 millimeter forward head posture usually takes me about a year. So we need to help those people get their GABA production improved because it takes so long to put that curve back in. Now, if it's just the atlas, can fix that sometimes a week, two weeks, three weeks, okay? But if it's the curve involved, that means it's more than just a regular subluxation. That means it's a subluxation that's been there a long time. Because remember, my average patient is 47 years old with 10 millimeters of forward head posture. So that typically takes a while to fix. So while we're waiting for that problem to get corrected, we can do uh, things like supplements, okay? Now, one of the things that we also need to do is we need to make sure that we work on our stress level because we know stress increases subluxation, which then uh, adds to uh, more subluxations, which then decreases GABA production. One of the best things for stress is prayer, meditation, Bible study, okay? Now, also, your gut microbiome disposes. That means you've had a history in your past where you had a lot of sugar, a lot of processed foods, maybe you've taken antibiotics. And so now your bacteria in your gut is not good for helping your body produce the natural amino acids. So you need to be taking good probiotics to, to flourish the gut and stop eating the processed foods, stop eating the sugars and the candies and things like that because that feeds the bad bacteria. So when you overproduce the bad bacteria, you get what we call GAD antibodies. GAD antibodies means your body is actually killing the good stuff because the bad bacteria has overgrown the good bacteria and now we've got a problem, okay? So we have to heal the gut, we have to take the pressure off the brainstem, and then we start getting GAB again. We could also have low levels of, of zinc, vitamin B6, magnesium, terrine, and glutamine. Um, and when those are low, it'll also inhibit the ability to produce GABA. Also, when our blood sugar is unstable, you know, diabetics have a lot of trouble sleeping because they have trouble maintaining and regulating their blood sugar level. You know, what the best thing to do is not eat the stuff that, that is what we call high index foods of, of glycemic index. When the glycemic index is high in foods, and that's all your sugars, all your processed foods, a lot of your carbohydrates, they raise up that blood sugar. And again, that can affect your body's ability to produce GABA. And then of course, once you stop getting enough sleep, it's the downward spiral, and that will affect your body's ability to produce GABA as well. So not getting enough sleep and not getting adequate sleep and not getting the deep sleep inhibits GABA. And the more you can get deep sleep, then the more your body will produce the GABA. Steps to deep sleep. Number one, we've got to correct the spine. The spine is a nervous system. It controls everything. It is the key to optimal health, and it's the most overlooked 
uh, part of the body, but it's the most important because your nervous system is your master computer. Your nervous system controls your body's ability to produce GABA. Your nervous system controls your gut. Your nervous system controls your immune system. Everything's controlled by your nervous system. So it always starts with a healthy nervous system. Then the two most important things for us to look at is the C1 vertebrae, the atlas. The second thing is to make sure we don't have any forward head posture and we have the 60 degree curve in our neck. When we have those two things going, we know we've eliminated the neurological problem for GABA production. Second thing is, we want to make sure that our body gets in a sleep pattern or rhythm. Our bodies like to be in rhythm. You know, you like to go to bed the same time, you like to wake up the same time, you like to eat the same time, exercising. Our bodies love rhythm. When, when little children get out of rhythm, they get irritable. You know, Sam, who's taping this for me, he's got a newborn. If, if that newborn gets out of rhythm, she's irritable and cranky for a day, okay? So our bodies love to be in rhythm in every part of life. So get a sleep pattern where you go to bed the same time every day. You wake up the same time every day and you go to bed the same time. So your body's in a rhythm, okay? Also, we know that uh, when you have a routine with cave-like temperatures and cave-like light, so your temperatures are between 60 and 67 degrees, your room is black like a cave. Okay, you don't wanna have, I don't wanna see alarm clock lights, I don't wanna see the little red, you know, digital clocks telling you what time it is. I don't wanna see any lights in your room at all completely dark, okay? And then we wanna make sure that you have, uh, your mind is relaxed. The best thing to do before your, to help your mind relax is read something inspirational. Read the Bible, read something that will inspire you to keep your mind off the stress. Because remember, God's bigger than your problem anyway, and you worrying about it ain't gonna make it any better anyway. So you wanna make sure you're always reading something positive before you go to bed. The worst thing you can do is watch TV or get on your cell phone and start looking up things. No, because the, the blue light is really bad for your body and it also inhibits your body's ability to release serotonin from the pineal gland. So that also affects your sleep. So you don't wanna do any electronics at least an hour before bed, okay? Now some of these new phones do have the blue light filter if that's the case, you can read your Bible or book from your phone, but I don't want you to look at the news or anything bad because when you think bad thoughts before you go to bed, it messes your body up and you need to be thinking positive thoughts before you go to bed, okay? Now, we don't want food or water before bed and uh, because we don't want you getting up having to go to the bathroom. So for me, it's three hours. For other people, it's one or two hours, all right? But, and you don't want to be eating food three hours before bed because you don't want to be digesting food. So if your body's ability to di digesting food all night, then you're not going to be able to get the deep sleep either. So you're going to eat. I try to eat at 7 so I can go to bed at 10. Then I can wake up naturally without my alarm clock, okay? If you really have trouble, naps are okay. I don't recommend them. But if you want to take a 20-minute nap, no more than 20 minutes, you can do that. But it has to be done with an alarm so you wake up. You don't want to do more than 20 minutes because if you do more than 20 minutes, the nap's actually going to inhibit you to go to sleep later on that night. Exercise is great for you, but you don't want to do exercise five hours before bedtime. So I try to get my exercise done, you know, right before lunch or early in the morning. So I don't inhibit my ability to get the deep sleep. So five hours of, of before bed, people who exercise late at night have trouble falling asleep or staying asleep. Okay, um, so let me make sure I covered everything. If you're, you're really stressed, um, you can find a verse and meditate on that verse that helps you with stress. You can journal in a book. If, you, if, you're, if your mind is racing, journal, write down the things you're stressing about so that you can just put them aside and then put them in, I'll put them in the something for God box so that he can handle it and I can't, okay? Now, uh, our position when we're sleeping we need to be on the firmest mattress we can stand, okay? I put a quarter inch um, mattress pad on top of my mattress. I do not like match, uh, pillow top mattresses. I don't like uh, water beds. I want the hardest, firmest mattress that the company makes. And then I wanna make sure I've got my cervical roll under my neck, my lumbar roll under my low back, a pillow under my knees, and my head is completely flat. It's touching the bed, okay? My head's not propped up at all. 
So my cervical roll was under my neck and that allows. Now, occasionally, if you, you can't get to your back or you can't stay on your back all night, you can go to your side, but you have to make sure your head's not tilted one direction or the other and you have to make sure you have a pillow between the legs, okay? And again, you wanna make sure you stay in alignment the entire night. Some of you guys have been given blocks and rolls. Use your sleeping equipment so that you can improve your spinal alignment as you're sleeping instead of hinder it. Obviously, caffeine is a big one. You know, uh, you shouldn't need, caffeine's a drug. You shouldn't need caffeine in the morning. You shouldn't be dependent on caffeine because then you got one pill to, uh, one drug to wake you up, another pill to make you go to bed. That's not how our bodies were made. Okay, I don't have any caffeine in my body ever. Why? I don't need it. Okay, I'm not tired during the day. Okay, so make sure we eliminate alcohol. How many people, oh, I guess I have a glass of wine to relax before I need, so I can go to sleep. Yeah, you may fall asleep faster, but then you're not going to get to deep REM sleep and you'll wake up later. So we don't want to have alcohol or nicotine before bed. And the last thing you want to do is sleeping medications, tons of side effects, Ambien, z uh, uh Lanestra. I mean, these are just awful. The side effects are burning hands and feet, daytime drowsiness. You know, one of the bus drivers actually was taking Ambien and dry, fell asleep at the wheel with 40 kids on the bus. Thankfully, none of them were killed, but most of them were hurt. So we want to make sure we don't ever have to be dependent on caffeine or any kind of sleeping medications, okay? Diarrhea, constipation, dry mouth, cough, all those can be side effects of those medications. And that doesn't even count the toxins that are put in your body as well. So maybe you are in a situation where it's going to take us a while to get your neck curve corrected so we can take the pressure off your brain stem, okay? Then temporarily, we're going to have to do some supplementation for GABA, okay, to help your body speed up that production, okay? So the GABA supplement has everything in it that we talked about to help your body naturally want to produce more GABA. There's no GABA in it. It helps your body produce GABA. That was my first one. So, and the directions say you take one with meal. Um, if you're having trouble sleeping, you take three, right, three hours before bed, okay? That'll help prepare your body for sleep, okay? Now, adaptocrine, if you've got a ton of stress, it helps reduce stress, okay? You would take two of those about two hours before bed. Formula 303 has magne magnesium and valerian. Valerium is a natural herb that helps your body relax. It also, if you have muscle pain or muscle spasms or cramps and things like that at night, that's another good one for you to do as well. GABA is my go-to. I always start with the GABA tone. Great supplement. And remember, this isn't something you're going to need permanently. This is just something you're going to need until we can take care of the neurological factor because you could be in that category where it could take a year to get your curve corrected. Some people, their x-rays are so bad, they're never going to be corrected. They may have to take the gabatone forever, but most of us will get the problem corrected and we will never need the gabatone, okay? Now, um, six essentials. Most people don't realize this, but if we just lived out these six essentials, we wouldn't have most of the problems that we have today. If we just started our day by recognizing and thanking God that he's blessed us with another day and that give him the first fruits of our time, spend a little time in the word, spend a little time in prayer, and then, um, and then meditation, okay? And then we get our adjustments weekly until our x-rays are corrected. We do our neck ups and our traction every day until our x-rays are corrected, okay? Practice good posture, your car, your computer, um, and then make sure your diet is clean. 75% of your food is God's food. Which we don't eat the processed sugary stuff because we know it wreaks havoc on our body, okay? And then we um, exercise at least 12 minutes, six days a week. And three of those 12-minute exercise routines is high intensity where that heart rate gets up extremely high. And that helps body produce GABA because you're improving your natural hormones as well. So, and then we rest. We talked about getting that sleep pattern going. And then we do a chemical detox. We're all loaded with toxins. We need to drink at least 16 ounces of water first thing in the morning. And then we need to do a chemical detox every six months to flush out the toxins that we consumed in the last six months. Because unfortunately, toxins are everywhere. And remember this, all sickness and disease can only come from two things, deficiencies and toxicities. We don't get rid of the toxins. It's going to have weaknesses. It's going to set up our body for weaknesses to come. 
So we want to make sure that we're doing all these steps. So when we're doing these steps, we're eliminating number one deficiency, decreased nerve flow. Why is it that people have decreased nerve flow, causing most of the problems in healthcare today, but nobody recommends chiropractic? Why? Because they don't know. They, all they know is my insurance pays for me to feel better if I treat the symptom. And guess what insurance pays for? Drugs. What's the number one killer in the United States? Drugs, because we've overprescribed drugs. We have to stop that type of thinking. It's, it's actually making us worse. Anytime we have a symptom, Team Cairo is the place to go. Because you go anywhere else, it's a drug, it's a shot, and then it's surgery. And they all lead you down that path. They're never fixing the problem, making your, allowing your body to heal itself because God made your body with a natural healing ability. And we have to release it. And that's all we're doing here is releasing it. And then you got to get rid of those toxins. You know, we can't have toxic thoughts. We can't have toxins from the medications. Okay? And I'm, I'm not against people taking medications to keep them alive. I'm against the medications that people are doing. They're abusing the medications. Okay? So I'm not against medications technically. I'm just against the abuse of medications. Okay? Now, we have to activate our nervous system to work properly. We remove that nerve interference. We realize your body is now starting to heal itself. And that's sometimes people start sleeping better in three or four weeks. Sometimes three adjustments will do it. Okay. The warning signs that you may need your checkup. You have occasional headaches. Maybe you have a bout with menstrual troubles every other month or blood pressure is creeping up. You really think God made you deficient of a blood pressure medication? No, I don't think so. Think about depression. How many millions of people are on depression medications? No. That, that majority of those people, neurological problem or a nutritional problem. Of course, we just talked about insomnia, sciatica, neck pain, decreased energy, brain fog, digestive issues. These are allergies, asthma. These are all issues that more than likely are neurological coming from your nervous system that we can help people with. Unfortunately, they don't know what you know. So our job is to tell them because they assume that they're healthy because they have no symptoms or pain. If they do have any pain, they think they're deficient of medication. So remember, we can never judge our health by how we feel because only the bottom 10% of the nerve is sensory. And we can adapt. We can be compressed more than 90% of that nerve, but we'll adapt to it with poor posture, right? So anybody that you know, you let them watch this video and they will get their exam and x-rays for only $47. Normally it's $525. And remember, we're available to come to your company, your church, your civic group. We bring lunch. We call it our Lunch and Learn Community Outreach Program. So many people don't know what you just learned. Please forward this workshop to the people that you care about the most. Thank you so much. Hope to see you soon.